Great to have you there. We're taking one mean machine, the Fractal Defined 7XL, and we're going to throw in a whole bunch of hardware to create a powerful NAS. We're going to take the Z440 workstation motherboard, throwing that in there, power supply cables, extra workstation, graphics card, RAM, CPU, hard drive, power supply, the whole bunch to create the ultimate NAS. Now I don't say ultimate lightly, we'll also throw in some nitrous to make this thing really take off. But uh, where do we start? Man, there's so much to unload. First things first, we're going to aim for 60 terabytes as a NAS, or maybe 100. I want to compete with Linus' uh, equivalent machine. But we need some spare hardware and lots of cables to make this happen, and you could buy a NAS, but we don't need one because this is going to be far more powerful than a NAS. We can do so much more and so much better, and yes, you could buy a gaming case, and totally put in some other hardware as well. But for now, take note, why would you want to watch this video? Well, I've taken seven hours of raw footage, condensed it down after 40 hours of editing to create what I think is a masterpiece. But hopefully you enjoy it. Let's go this way and, oh, no, that's me racing. We'll go that way to show you the video. Wait. You're not subscribed. Well, I know how to solve that. You could probably subscribe, but I mean, only subscribe if you really want to see future videos. Otherwise, there's no point. Uh, but definitely like the video. That helps the algorithm and helps my channel grow immensely. I'm serious, if you're not going to click like, that's not going to help my channel. Okay, it's okay. I'll earn your like. Don't worry about it. Uh, check this out. I'll show you how to do this. Race Z Studios presents HP Z440 Case Swap Guide. We're going to take the rather powerful Z440. Now, I've done previous videos on the HP Z240 Case Swap. I've done an HP Z420 case swap, but I never did the guide. And here's the Z440. It's finally going into the Define 7XL to create an ultra fast 60 terabyte NAS with 10 gigabit networking. And I'm going to showcase the entire process from tearing down my previous server, a Z420 workstation loaded with lots of hardware that allowed for 60 terabyte of storage with 10 gigabit Ethernet connectivity. And when I take all this hardware and kit out our new system, the Z440. And yes, that includes the full detail right down to the front I.O. pinout. So that you can do this with your system as well. And all that before your next coffee break. Wait, where's my coffee? It's empty. Check out the video outline there. Let's get right started. No time to waste. Stage one, motherboard retrieval. Wait, now just before we do, I do need your help. Right now the channel's not doing so well, we're not seeing a lot of views, and if anything, the algorithm's being really harsh, but I need your help to support that channel. Absolutely, if you uh, will consider doing any of these supporting features that will really help the channel grow. Aiming for a thousand subs, hopefully before the end of the year, that'd be fantastic. Now stage one, motherboard removal. Check out a related video where I went through the three different generations of the HP workstation, the Z series. But here it is, motherboard socket with LGA 2011-3. So fairly capable CPU range. We can fit either E5-16 or E5-26 V3 or V4 CPU. And very important, there's the Haswell versus the Broadwell generation of CPUs that you can choose from. Choose wisely there, lots of options. Generally, the Z440 is limited to 140 watt, and it uh, would also use a very powerful factory cooler. There are some 4-pin adapters, even a Z cooler upgrade, high-performance cooler, all of which can work in your case swap and check out some of the i7 supported memory modules take note those are non-ecc if you switch over to the xeons you must have ecc regulated memory pause on those details if you desire there's also the four or eight memory modules that you could run take note if you run eight in this machine and you've case swapped you do need that fan module to keep everything nice and cool where did i obtain the pinout well i obtained that from doug lomax video check it out it's really cool but here it is, 8 gig memory modules. We're going to load this one up. They also come with either a 525 or a 700 watt power supply. But there are adapters that allow you to run any ATX power supply. I'll show you how to do that later. I'm definitely going to run a more powerful one. Uh, very aged, but it's still working well. Now the footage is going to be really rushed because there's so much for us to get through. As I said, 7 hours of footage condensed down to a mere 25 minutes. It's incredible. Now this particular machine is very capable. We have lots of expandability. Check out some of those key features there. We will absolutely load this up. Case swap, definitely worth it. Check out a related video for more detail. But for now, taking our old hardware, trying to harvest as much as we can, we're actually going to transplant most of the leftover hardware into the Z240. 
This is a stock case here, which I've actually sold on to recoup some costs for uh, the video here. But this is great serving someone while I'm short. Oh, might need to do some basic cable management. But there it is, that one's off. Now for stripping down our Z440 and retrieving that motherboard and showing some of the hardware while we're there. This very important adapter will allow us to convert to our ATX power supply, but more on that later. We do need to study the front I.O. At the time of making the video back in March, would you believe it, uh, there was no pinouts for this. So I had to do some grunt work with the multimeter to really figure out what was cooking in this proprietary connection from HP. And as far as I can tell, Murphy's Law applies. I have got the pinout. You're welcome. That was critical in order to do the swap. Published that one in September somewhere. So we're on green stretches now. Check out some of the other pinouts if you do want to get rid of some of your USB errors. That's totally possible. But it's not easy to do. You've got to cut out sometimes the uh, nice insulated wire and find a solution. But you could also keep the factory connection there. Now in this particular case, we need to remove the CPU. Not absolutely required, but I'm going to do it because I'm actually going to upgrade. It's also nice to check the thermal paste just to make sure it's still good. Okay, a little bit of run out there, it's not too bad, but that definitely needs some new paste. Now you could upgrade your cooler while you're in there. Take note though, you do need this adapter cable to pull this off. And at the time of filming, which is way back in March, I had a very, very wimpy 4-core, 8-thread CPU in there. But eventually I upgraded to the E2697A, which is a very powerful CPU for this uh, NAS system. But more on that later. For now, let's get all these motherboard screws removed and retrieve that motherboard. It's about 10 screws, very easy. Check out all the corners there. There's quite a bit of uh, hardware to get through. But once you've got these out, the motherboard lifts slightly to your right and then just lifts right out with a little bit of an angle. Let's give you a quick demo of that process, but there it is, all screws removed, easy. And out it comes, perfect. There's our board, ready for the Fractal Define. Let's go for it, no time to waste. In the Fractal Define, first thing is standoffs, but let me show you the hardware quickly. This is actually kind of important, we'll pause here for a sec. We get vibration grommets, which is really handy for mounting all those hard drives, especially if you're gonna mount quite a lot of them, that's really good. Uh, those look like the hard drive mounting screws. That might be the motherboard screws, or at least one variant of them. And this would be our, oh, that looks like our standoffs. We are gonna need those right now, so we'll throw them in. And uh, the next one here, ah, uh, yes, this must be the, Ah, this is actually the hard drive mounting screw. So that's a little bit of a different design, the joys of the vibration grommet. But I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. For now, let's get the standoff reposition. Check out this diagram. You must lay the motherboard down, do some checking. For now, the two red ones in the middle are the ones that I found do not align. You could obviously drill it out if you were that way inclined, but I'm not going to destroy my case for one motherboard. So let's stick to the motherboard screws supplied by the Z440. I'm probably going to regret that later, but either way, we'll use them for now in Arctic Silver with my top secret thermal application method, the smiley face plus spreader technique. Absolutely spread these, otherwise you will run into heating problems. Nothing like 100% coverage. Okay, it's actually looking pretty reasonable. Maybe a little bit dirty, residual thermal paste. Don't worry, nothing a hammer can't fix. We'll give it a quick, a uh, little bit of hammer action there. Yep, that's really helping. Okay, a little static charge, that's okay. The thumbnail's uh, really living up to its potential here. And done. A little bit of static, that's fine. Okay, RAM modules, let's grab these. No time to waste. They are eight gig for now, but eventually I'll upgrade to 2400 megahertz to get a little bit more power from my NAS system. Now for these pinouts, they're really gonna come in handy. Uh, because we do have to connect these wires, but what are we connecting? We have no power supply. We can't go anywhere until we get that. Uh, talking about bonus, what about CPU cooler? Are you really going to make me pull off that cooler right after I fitted it with brand new thermal paste? I mean, there's no point pulling it off, even though we have a new cooler here. Okay, tell you what, I'll pull it off just because you asked nicely. This is the Cooler Master Hyper 212, but uh, much to my dismay, it is the white edition which doesn't support this Al LGA socket so definitely check that before you buy them and definitely plan it well ahead of time. Uh, in my case I got caught out here. Fits the Z240 but it does not fit the Z440 but for demo purposes it would look really good. Maybe a blackout one would look better but anyway you can fit an aftermarket cooler. You will need a little power adapter though so keep that in mind it's not just straight cut. This is the HP proprietary little cable. Normally your CPU fan's gonna have four pins, very, very simple, 12 volt and a sense wire. But in this case, we need an adapter. They are available online. I do not have one, otherwise I would have tested it out. Uh, one other detail, you do have to notch these. You'll see the HP plug actually has two little standoff keys off on the sides. 
where normally fans have two that are located in different locations. So sometimes, if you fit aftermarket fans, you do have to trim off one of those. So a rather strange plug, but that's for uh, the joys of HP workstations. Nothing we can't bypass. Okay, there's our fan remounted, and no way to not redo the thermal paste just because you wanted me to. But there it is. We now do our PSU. Where is it coming from? This is the Z420 case swap. Sorry, I never actually did a video on this one, but I just released sort of a blueprint for doing this case swap, so we'll go through that quickly. There's the front IO pinout. You're welcome. If you want to do this one, still a really powerful machine. The main challenge is that small little transistor which controls the fan thermal control or fan thermal speeds. Uh, also take note if you want to get rid of the USB errors, it is possible. You just need to splice two pins together. There's the guide there. You also need an ATX power adapter, so just one would do for the system and then standard CPU power. And uh, we could also fit aftermarket fans, which is great. Now back to retrieving the PSU. This is an ancient, I emphasize ancient, the dust is not there just for dramatic effect, it's actually ancient. It's a C-Sonic, about 700 watt, which should be enough to power quite a few drives. So I'm hopeful this is going to last. At least for now, the budget didn't allow a new power supply, but that's okay. We'll use this one, it's well used, and we'll pass on that Z420 to someone else. Now let's get the power supply fit in. Thankfully it's modular, that does help. Now Fractal Define here does come with a really nice little bracket. We'll see if I can figure that out other way around. Perfect. And just a few screws to hold that in place and then we thread it in. That's actually a really cool design. Best one I've seen out of all the cases I've done. Now for wiring. Stage 4. Easy. I think. Okay, that's a nice hard drive SATA cable that I recycled. There's our connection there. So that's adapting to the ATX power supply. We'll try and wedge that through. It's actually quite a tough fit. And that's our CPU converter there. Very nice. We can just plug in our CPU power and keep our Z440 power. Now, I'm also going to throw in a custom LED strip, but more on that later for now. Uh, you can see it lying down there, very strategically mounted, but very handy. It gives you a bit of mood lighting in your case. Now, for the front IO connections. USB 3.0, piece of cake. That one just slots right into the internal slot. USB 2.0 plug, which is relatively straightforward to do as well. And here for the mystery cables, I'm going to try and quickly match these up. Sorry, a little bit blurry. The GoPro wouldn't quite focus on these. But we're going to take each of those, connecting them precisely the, to the correct pins. Check out my uh, published figures for those. But very important to connect these the right way around. Otherwise, your system may not work and you could cause damage. Also, check the terminal orientation or polarity, positive or negative. And the upper cable there, very straightforward. Once it's in, it's an absolute breeze. You're wondering why I'm unplug unplugging everything? Well, I actually did a test fit of the Z840 motherboard right after, but that's a future video. But for now, check it out. The motherboard's mounted. We've got RAM, we've got a CPU, we've potentially got power. We have no PCI Express connections, and obviously we just did the uh, IO connections. I just unplugged them again or replugged them in. But anyway, there it is. The system's ready. Oh, there's that memory connection there. Definitely take note of that one. If you're running more than four DIMM modules, you will have to deal with that. I'll sh show you. I guess I showed you how to do that already. So definitely keep that in mind. You do want to splice some pins together to make that go away. Not that I've done it myself yet. Now, quick bonus. Motherboard specifications. Let's dig through this board. Slot 1, PCIe 2.0, X1. And in brackets, one electrical lane. Next one, PCIe 3.0, X16 with 16 lanes. Next one there, slot 3. PCIe 2.0, which is a X4, 4 electrical lanes. We got slot 4, which is PCIe 3.0, 8 electrical. Then we have slot then we have slot 5, X16, 16 lanes, and a PCIe 32, 33 megahertz, ideal for those older form factor cards, like a Wi-Fi card perhaps, that's what I'm going to put in there. But anyway, front USB header. Very useful if you're looking to connect internal USB. We've got our SATA ports there. We have a main power supply. These, these are the fast SATA ports, take note of that, 6 gigabits per second. We have 8 DIMM sockets. We have an internal USB 1 light connection there for serial connections. A little bit old now, but still useful. There's our memory adapter. Very important to splice that together, otherwise you will not be able to run your fans without a whole bunch of problems. And uh, last one there, CPU power. Very important to connect. If you do want to connect an aftermarket fan, definitely need that adapter in order to pull that off. We do have our CMOS battery. Keep an eye on these, especially on these workstations. They tend to go flat. And we also have our chipset, C612. And a couple of spots here which uh, lacked screws, but that's okay, no major, they don't matter too much as long as we have every other circuit, so that's all the others here. Scanning around, should be a total of 10 of which about 8 are connectable, and obviously there's a couple that we were unable to connect. Easy!
Okay, now for test fit. Can the GPU riser actually help us out? Now in my case, I'm not gonna need to do a flashy mount while I have this graphics card on hand. Let's quickly do a test fit. This is the 3080 12 gigabyte Strix OC, very powerful GPU, but I've replaced it for, for a RTX 3090 Ti. But anyway, here it is. It does work really well. I'm very impressed with this riser mounting system. Probably one of the best I've seen yet again, not that I've seen that many riser adapters. But anyway, we need one of these little riser extension cables. And then we're off going, GPU mounted. But anyway, this is a NAS, we don't need that. Now I'm tempted to fit that fan in there to give us some extra airflow and check this out. Quadro K4000, very era appropriate. Could be ideal for a NAS system because these are relatively low power draws. So keep that in mind, the workstations often come with these, but I'm not gonna fit this. Mostly because I think I can fit something even more powerful. Check this out, we gotta tear down my old server. This is the Z. 420 which was loaded with hardware absolutely loaded but we're going to take all this hardware and transfer it across really quickly as well this is the jehe air cooled nvme adapter one nvme this is the h240 hba this is our uh, x540 t2 nic very handy 10 gigabit ethernet port we have our front cover for the z420 powerful workstation still really cool Digging through the 5.25 inch base, we have these old master hard drive brackets. You may have seen a related video on those. And then hard drives. Do need all these hard drives. They've got my video archives, lots of 10 terabyte drives to try and make all this work. And a couple of SSDs in this, what I think is an unbranded uh, handle slash SSD carrier. So that's really handy. Uh, wasn't the highest quality though, so I don't think it's the HP original item, but there it is. Okay, with the SSDs out, we can now launch into cabling. This is the SSF. 8087 cable which gives us one ssf connection to four sata cables we also need to find one of these original bays i still have a couple of these might put the dvd writer back in before i sell the system off the joys of recuperating costs now back to our machine of interest instead of running the workstation card i'm actually going to run this one which i got for real cheap on online marketplaces and it's a evga 970 nice blue blue highlight there which should fit in well with the system and I haven't tested it yet but I'm sure what it was described as working it will indeed be. Now very very useful two six pins to keep this one running it's actually quite straightforward. Why this particular GPU? Well I'm going to record 4k footage on this every once in a while as well very handy being your NAS storage device. Let's do a quick boot test while we're here we'll quickly power that on and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already but there it is it's uh actually wow that fan's doing oh wow that's really noisy so it sounds like the bearing may be shot just as well i caught that we would be really annoyed having to tear that down or we'll replace it that's actually working a couple of errors there because uh the front io signal is not as hp intended it but nonetheless if you, if you can deal with pressing a key you can survive there it is nice and cool cpu surviving and we've got everything there. So still on the 1620 CPU for now, but eventually I upgrade. Uh, not sure I've got footage of that actually. That was a miscalculation. But anyway, the system's up and running. We have confirmed that it's working and looks like everything's there. Or at least the base system. We'll definitely upgrade that soon. But anyway, okay, this is the H240 HBA, which will allow us to run several hard drives, up to eight hard drives. Pretty good speeds. This is my riser mod underneath the GPU to allow us to utilize all of the PCI slots in this machine. I'm also going to install the Wi-Fi card in that last slot and here's that cable connection. Very very handy SSF allowing us to connect to four SATA or SAS hard drives. Two of those cables in this particular model allowing eight hard drives. That's going to be in incredibly important uh, but that's often neglected on other builds. They don't show you how to connect all these hard drives uh, so fascinating how that works but we need power adapters as well. Check these out. Right now I've got a couple here which will hopefully allow me to run at least four hard drives but eventually we will expand uh, so definitely need some of these extension cables. Take note hard drives use at max probably about 15 watt each so you do want to keep that in mind as you're powering these so you don't uh, overload your power supply rails but anyway generally they're pretty well capable. Now definitely going to upgrade the SATA cables here to something a bit more aesthetic than the red one. Nothing wrong with pinching from previous machines but let's go for something new. Hard drive expansion brackets, absolutely follow my guide on how to install these because again, I feel like no one ever tells us how to do these. But anyway, I'll show you how to do them and what I did there is absolutely wrong. You cannot install them that way. So how do these little brackets work? Why are they so expensive? Why do we even need them for this case? Why can't they just be supplied? Uh, we get a few, we get a decent amount, but 
future proof eventually the case will become age so i decided to buy as many as i could get my hands on they are kind of pricey but they work really well and definitely check out related videos that, that one looks really good there yes absolutely so this is it we get vibration grommets pretty standard you would definitely want those for uh, these kind of hard drives we do have our mounting screws to get our hard drives in and there's the tray itself so what's special about these trays? Well, you can fit at least one hard drive and man, I'm tempted to see if you can actually fit an SSD and a hard drive. That could be a fun little experiment. Uh, I suspect you probably could if you were that way inclined. And that's it. Let's throw them in and take note. They would normally sit here, but uh, not an expert or anything, but I feel like those aren't going to hold weight at the moment. So something's missing and here it is. This bracket is critical. But take note, if you do mount this brace, you will lose the ability to run certain very large GPUs. So RTX 4090, goodbye. You can only run probably something like the GTX 970 or equivalent. That's okay. We'll mount this bracket. A little bit tricky to get it in. But once it's mounted, it's actually really cool and quite sturdy. We can now secure those drives. And relatively simple, a little white clip on the side and then one screw per tray. So that's really easy. Now in terms of the vibration grommets, this is really straightforward as well, but make sure you align those grommets with your hard drive. Each hard drive will be slightly different in terms of positioning, even for the same hard drive, which is kind of fascinating. Then our cables, I will absolutely replace those slow SATA 2.0 cables with faster ones, but for now that's going to have to do just to get the machine up and running. And very important to connect all your hard drives with power from the supplied connections. Now in terms of being able to maximize your storage capacity here, you really are able to optimally organize these hard drives and decide how you want to arrange them. But in my case, going for a very, very convenient setup here where we have most of our trays occupied. I'm also going to install some 5.25 inch base, but give me a chance. I'll show you how to do that very shortly. But for now, that's it. I have two SSDs in here because I'm going to run Windows 10 and I'm actually going to run TrueNAS Core. Yes, dual operating system. You can just toggle on the BIOS which one I want to run. Why both? Well, that gives me the opportunity to actually record some 4K footage in Windows and then transfer it to another computer and then back to this computer through uh, TrueNAS. But very, very powerful. And obviously we got our 10 gigabit connectivity, which is pretty cool as well. Really fast transfers. Now, in terms of fans and cooling, how am I going to keep this thing cool? Well, the Fractal Define has a really cool fan hub controller here. It's the Nexus Plus 2. It does have power for pretty much everything we need. We've got a power connection, SATA. Okay, and that one actually has a CPU fan 4-pin connector, which is very handy. Very important to connect the CPU one so you can have your PWM management of fan speeds. A little bit of a wire tuck. It's not my best work, but man, that's actually looking really good for a... Uh, little bit of an organized system and we even have some cable ties left over i don't think i really needed to use any might use those for future builds but very handy definitely use some of those cable ties to tidy it up now stage six hard drive expansion what if you wanted to run even more hard drives well i love these old master adapters so i'm going to chuck in a couple of them because well why not and that also allows fitment of a lot of drives so 12 ssds between the two adapters or otherwise two hard drives and a total of eight ssds pretty pretty cool very important with these screws, make sure that you get a nice fit with that white tab. Very important on that, otherwise your hard drives may not be fully secure. The old master adapter was relatively easy to fit. Didn't need some screw drawer to find some bits. Stage does a boot. Okay, we still got those boot errors, but I'm not too bothered about that. But TrueNAS Core has loaded successfully, meaning we're all sorted. I'll show you that soon. And Windows 10, does that boot? It does boot. Excellent. Okay, that's a pass. Now, quick TrueNAS. How does TrueNAS work? Well, very straightforward. We go onto our web interface, log in, and yay, 64 gig. We have our CPU, which is really cool. Take note, I've upgraded from a 1620v3 to a Broadwell 2697A v4. Very powerful, but keep an eye out for the model number. It should be listed on the CPU. Otherwise, it may not be a final version QS. It's most likely going to be an engineering version. Speed test! Much to my surprise, I am still not really breaking through uh, very high speeds here, but we're getting at least around 2 gigabits per second, which isn't too shabby uh, given the uh, transfer rate there, but definitely not as high as I would have wanted from one to another, but it does work really well if we overload it with multiple transfers, so less of a bottleneck. Now doing a more serious speed transfer like iPerf, I do gain some pretty solid speeds. And that's it, stage 10 extras. We've made it through, the Z440 will live on probably in someone else's hands once I fit a new motherboard in there. Now for some quick data. Let's have a look at 
Windows 10 loading up this CPU. This is the upgraded E5 2697AV4 just to make sure that it's authentic. So far I'm relatively convinced, although the CPU mark is a little bit lower than what I would have expected according to published results. So question mark, maybe it's not an authentic CPU, maybe it's one of those early engineer samples, but as far as I can tell, it does appear to be at least somewhat of a quality sample, but very, very fascinating doing your benching, making sure that your CPUs are indeed of the correct specification. But for the time being, it's running. Also completed a Signbench R in this case, uh, Simon 2024 test, while also doing a little bit of hardware info logging. I'm sure I'll do some videos on that in the future, but what CPU would I recommend right now? E52683V4 is really cheap right now, so it could well be worth upgrading your system to one of these. Uh, E52697V4 has benched relatively well, but it's still a fairly expensive CPU, so try and find the cheapest one for your system that you can get your hands on. Stay tuned for that. But for now, some bonus footage. This is unreleased and uh, very interesting. UPS, un uninterrupted wall power supply. You absolutely need these. This one's really cool. It's uh, very, very powerful, 650 VA, and it's actually able to run your machine in the case of a power cut. Uh, very, very important because when the, oh, bang on, oh no, what's going on? Oh, whoa, 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 that's, uh, oh, that smoking's normal. Don't worry about the smoke, that's completely normal. Uh, if you accidentally overpower your, uh, a machine so while i quickly run this out to uh wherever i'm gonna take it that looks like fire hazard uh make sure you subscribe and i'll see you on the next video take it easy hey you're still there we're in for some bonus footage z440 is doing its job really well Bench expand and right now true nurse is doing a great job as well but we're in for some bonus content here good to see your status is subscribed well done we'll put you in the vip category for managing to stick it out Let's go for bonus footage. First one, CPU selection guide. Well, there's quite a few options when it comes to your Xeons, particularly from the Broadwell generation. I'm only going to focus on Broadwell because, let's be honest, the Haswells are getting a little bit old. But in terms of the optimal performance, the ones that I would choose are more or less the ones with the highest clock speed. But it's up to you in terms of how you're going to apply these. Uh, this is a selection that I would have, and I guess the top candidates according to power and I guess common use. So let's have a look at them. I think they're pretty solid contenders. First one here, the Gaming King. We'll call that one the Xeon E5 1680 V4. Very capable, very decent clock speed on that one, and at least an 8-core CPU, which is ideal for gaming. So we'll call it Gaming King. Next one, the Core Dominator. The Xeon E5-2699A, that's a pretty solid CPU, lots of cores, 22, and it's probably one of the most powerful CPUs in the Broadwell lineup. Next one there, the All Rounder, this is the one I've installed on my NAS, because it really is the All Rounder, we've got good clock speed and decent number of cores, so I can handle most tasks and it's pretty versatile. And last one there, Super Heavy, now normally these would be a good contender, but man, this one might be a little bit hard for the Z440 to handle. The Total power draw there being around 160 watts. That might be one to avoid. Okay, now for the next stage, which is hunting for those CPUs. Now, I'm just going to use some generic footage here from eBay if you do go on. And apologies about the pricing being in New Zealand dollar, but it's up to you. I'm sure you can understand most of it most of the time. But in terms of CPUs, something like the 2697AB4 is a pretty ideal sample. But just make sure when you're getting these that you're keeping them out for or ES versus QC formats. In terms of RAM, lots of options. Right now the RAM is actually relatively affordable, which is great to see. And I mean, you can really cut this thing out with all the RAM you would want, whether it be one, two, three, four, however many modules you may want. But this is the joy. Definitely make sure you search for a kit or a bundle, then you can have more modules, usually for a better price. Uh, definitely worth it. Now, anyway, let's continue here. Um, I guess I should show you a bit of a teaser for future video. Let's have a look. We'll give you this one here. This is great. Now in the future we're going to take what was a previously featured machine and tune it up. It's going to get a whole bunch more hard drives and a whole heap of storage and it's going to run TrueNAS. And this one I'd hope to be running 24-7 now. I'm going to try NVMe but I suspect it's not going to run off NVMe on this old system. Let's see if we can boot it off a NVMe installed on a USB drive. And we're going to give it lots of hard drives. We're actually going to completely saturate this particular small form factor machine with hard drives. And it's going to be absolutely glorious. Low power draw, 
Also going to include some SSDs just for an added little bit of cache, but I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned.